so uh, today we're going to move on to um, it's the topic is use calculus and kinematics for motion in a straight line. Okay, now it seems very similar to what we've just done, which is all the Suva equations. But Suva equations are for um, constant acceleration, and what we're going to look at today is for variable acceleration. And you're going to use calculus, which is uh, differentiation and integration to um, find out some things for travel graphs. You're going to find this easy, I think, if you are confident with differentiation and integration. And I think you should be because you've been doing it in pure and you've been doing it in additional maths. OK, so um, all, the, all the stuff down here we will look at in a later week, which is going to focus on the top half of things today. So um, if we look at these two graphs, We've got a travel graph here, and how do you find the distance traveled for 10 seconds? So you would find the area underneath the graph between 0 and 10 seconds. It's a triangle, so it's 10 by 8. 10 by 8 divided by 2 is going to be uh, 40, so it's gone 40 meters. How do you find the acceleration? Well, that's going to be the gradient to the line. Change in y by change in x. And that's going to be, well, it's changed from 0 to 8. So the change in y is 8. The change in x is 10. So 8 over 10, 0 0.8. Okay. Now, this graph's different because if we want to do the same thing, it's now a curve. You can't find the gradient of this line easily for acceleration, and you can't find the area underneath it for um, the distance traveled easily. And... What we've got to do then is, if we want to find the area into a curve, you integrate. If you want to find the gradient function of a curve, you differentiate. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, another couple of things we want to look at is that if a graph curves up, um, this is increasing acceleration. If you think about it, the velocity is getting quicker and quicker and quicker, higher and higher and higher, and times elapsing less and less and less because it's getting steeper and this one it's shallowing out which means that it's decreasing acceleration it's getting faster but by a lesser and lesser amount um, so it's important to know that for uh, certain wordy questions there'll just be the one mark questions at the end of things okay um, a way of remembering things is going to be with this diagram. I think this diagram is useful to copy out. If you start with acceleration, you can integrate to find out velocity, and you can integrate that to find out uh, distance traveled or displacement. And it's going to be the other way around. So going from displacement, you're going to differentiate to get to velocity, and you're going to differentiate to get to acceleration. And the reason this works is if we just think back to our velocity time graph. A velocity time graph, the um, gradient was the acceleration, which meant we have to differentiate, which means obviously if we want to go the other way, we'd integrate. And from your velocity time graph, if you wanted to find the displacement, the distance traveled, you would integrate. And then if we want to go the other way around, you differentiate. So it all makes perfect sense. Okay, um, what we're going to be focusing on today is just the differentiation portion of things. We're going to split it up into two little sections, differentiation this week, integration next week. But I think um, teaching you the whole thing at the same time makes more sense for your notes. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples, and then you'll have to go with some yourself. So the first example is we've got a particle moving on the x-axis at time t. Displacement x meters from O is given by t by x equals t to the power of 4 minus 32t plus 12. So we find the velocity. So we've got the, it's moving on the x-axis, the displacement is x meters, so they've used x instead of s. But we are going to have to differentiate to find out um, the gradient function. And if we substitute in t is 3, we will get the, um, the velocity at t equals 3. So we can do that. Uh, differentiate, so multiply by your power, take one off your power, multiply by your power, take one off your power, or in this case it's just get rid of the t, 
and number terms disappear. So this is our velocity function. Put in t is 3, and you're going to get it at 6. 76, sorry. So that means that velocity is 76 meters per second. The next part is asking you the value of t um, for which p is instantaneously at rest. So that basically means when it's stopped, when the velocity is 0. So we've got a velocity function. We equate it to 0, and then we just solve for t. So um, if this is rearranged by adding 32 to both sides, divided by 4, and then keep root, and you're going to get that uh, t equals 2 at this point as well. Um, solving this cubic, even though it's an easy one, you could just type that into your polynomial sol solver on your calculator, and that would uh, get you the answer. Okay, and then part C was asking the acceleration of p when t is 1.5. So if you remember back to that um, diagram, uh, if you want to find acceleration from velocity, differentiate again. So differentiate again. So 12t, number of terms disappear, so 12t squared. Substitute in t is 1.5, and you're going to get out to 27, and the units are 27 meters per second squared. Okay, it's straightforward enough if you can uh, differentiate, just differentiate and substitute the things in. It's just got a bit of context around it now. Uh, next question we'll look at. So a child is playing with a yo-yo. Yo-yo leaves the child's hand at time t equals zero. Travels vertically in a straight line before returning to the child's hand. The distance s meters of the yo-yo from the child's hand after t seconds is given by this. All right. So the first question is asking us to justify the restriction zero to three, which is getting a little bit more tricky now. So what we can um, do with this is we can justify it by substituting in our limits and see what happens. Okay. So if you substitute in zero, what do you get out? You get out zero. So it's not moved at all. So um, it's also time equals zero. We're not going to be putting anything less than zero in because we're not going to be going back in time. What happens if we put three in? If you put three in, you're going to get 1.8. Um, you're going to get 3.6. So 1.8 out of 3.6. is 5.4 and then uh, 3 uh, cubed is 27 times 0 0.2 is 5.4 as well so you get back to 0. So the justification is going to be when you put in these two limits it's the distance traveled is 0. You've, you've got your start point and then that 3 seconds later is the yo-yo is returned to the child's hand. Okay. Um, there's slightly other way you could uh, explain it, but I think the way I explained it there was a little bit easier to do. If you um, if you sketched a graph, if you factorized it, then you would see there that the roots are uh, it's only positive uh, between zero and three, which means that was a zero, that was a zero, and this is at negative times. So this doesn't make sense. This down here doesn't make sense because it's not going back up through the child's hands higher up. Okay, so that's how it makes sense there. But I think that uh, given a different context, um, substituting in these numbers is still always going to be meaningful. Sketching a graph is a very good way of explaining it as well. But um, it's just trickier to do. I mean... Um, you might have done sketching cubics in your pure maths. You might be pretty good at that. So if you if you can do that, then great. It's probably a more visual way of showing things. But if you substitute in these boundaries 0 and 3 and actually put a few words to explain it, you could get those marks just as well. Okay, let's look at what the next part of the question says. So the next part of the question is asking us what's remind us what well. so it says. Find the maximum distance of the yo-yo from the child's hand to correct three significant figures. So if we look at the graph, maximum distance is up here to maximum. What do we know about maximums? If you differentiate, the gradient there is zero. So our plan is differentiate this, equate it to zero, 
and that will give you the maximum velocity. Um, so if you find out, sorry, that'll give you, yeah, that'll give you the maximum, that'll tell you the time where the maximum velocity is reached. And then if you put that back in the original equation, you'll get the distance traveled. So differentiate, so there's a gradient function. Equate it to zero, because that's where your maximum velocity occurs. When you solve, you're going to get the time. So it's going to be the positive one, so you're not going to have negative time. Substitute back, that back into the original equation, and you're going to get how far it traveled. See all these dots, these ellipses? It's because they're keeping this value exact in their calculator. Keep it exact in your calculator, and your answer will be more accurate. Okay, so um, have a go at these exercises. The reason I'm giving you two exercises today is each of them is only six questions long. They're fairly short exercises. The first one, 11b, is more like example four, the first example we looked at. And exercise 11c is more like example five, the second one we looked at. This one's going to be a bit easier than this one. Um, also, um, the exercises from the textbook, they're sort of, even though they're only six questions, they sort of, they're partly on one page and partly on another. So um, if you have a look at the document of, uh, attached for the exercises, you'll have to scroll down to the bottom to find the start of 11b, then it'll carry on to the next exercise, uh, onto the next page. And then uh, the same thing for 11c. It's all in one document, but you'll have to sort of scroll down to find the appropriate exercises. Then photograph it, upload it to me, let me have a look at uh, your work. And also just be proactive about asking me if you want help with anything, because um, if you if you submit all your work and you didn't really understand one, then when reviewing it, because it's just a photo on a computer screen, I might miss that you didn't quite understand one properly. Uh, but if you just make it clear to me, just send me a message, send me an email, say, so could you explain this one, could you explain that one, then I'm more than happy to do it. Okay, that's everything for today.